In this question, our goal is to figure out the differential rate law for a reaction based on data from trials using different initial concentrations of each of the reactants. In this particular question, we have a fictional reaction involving substances R3Q and XD. So here we can see our equation has two R3Q and three XD. The scientist conducts multiple trials with different initial concentrations. We can see that here in our table. Here's our initial concentration of R3Q and our initial concentration of XD. So you can see those numbers are different for each of the four trials. They measure the initial reaction rate for each of those trials, which is in our third column here. So our goal is to figure out the order of reaction risk with respect to each of those reactants. So first, let's think about R3Q. So in order to figure out the order of reaction, we're going to need to find out how changing the concentration of that thing affects the reaction rate. So I'm looking for two rows in my table, two different trials that have the same concentration of XD, but different concentrations of R3Q. So I could either look at rows one and two, since XD is the same, but R3Q is different. Or I could look at rows three and four. Those also have XD the same and R3Q different. So it doesn't matter which one I choose. I could choose either. I'm going to get the same answer. So I can see here my initial concentration of R3Q went from 2.3 to 4.6. So I want to figure out what my multiplying factor was there. So I'm going to divide them. I'm going to do 4.60 divided by 2.30. If I put that in my calculator, I get 2. So what that tells me if, is if I take 2.3 and multiply it by 2, I'm going to get 4.6. So between trial 2 and trial 1, I've doubled my concentration of R3Q. So I want to see what's the effect on my rate of reaction. So looking at my values, I started with 0 0.0200 for trial two. And for trial one, I've got 0 0.0400. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna see what my change was. So I'm gonna divide them. And of course, that's gonna give me two as well. So I found that when we doubled the concentration of R3Q going from trial two to trial one, we also doubled the initial rate of reaction. So I found when R3Q multiplies by two, rate also multiplies by two. So what I found there is a first order reaction. In our rate law equation, that would look like rate is equal to K times R3Q to the power of 1. So if I double the concentration, my rate is also going to double. So we've got first order with respect to R3Q. Okay, that's the first part done. Now we're looking at XD. So this time we want a situation where XD changes, but R3Q stays the same. So looking at my rows in my table, I could either use um, trial one and trial three together because the concentration of R3Q is the same there, but the concentration of XD changes. Or I could use trial two and trial four because the concentration of R3Q is the same there, but again, the concentration of XD changes. Either of those is going to give me the same answer, so I can just choose. Here I'm going to choose to use trial 2 and trial 4. Okay, so between trial 2 and trial 4, I'm going to do the same thing again. I want to see what happened here. So going from trial 2 to trial 4, I've got 5.80 in trial four and 2.90 in trial two. So again, that's a factor of two. So going from trial two to trial four, 
my concentration of XD multiplied by two. So now I wanna see what happened to my rate in the same trials. So we went from 0 0.0200 to 0 0.0800. So again, I'm gonna divide those to see what's my ratio. When I divide those, I get four this time. So I found that my rate multiplied by four. So what I found here is that when XD multiplies by two, my rate multiplied by four. So what that's telling me is that I have a second order reaction because two squared or two to the power of two is four. So in my rate equation, that's gonna end up looking like K times concentration of XD squared. So that's why when I doubled it, it changed the rate by doubled squared, in other words, four. So my order of reaction for XD I found is two. Awesome, okay, so we've done the difficult part. Now I'm finding the overall order of reaction. Remember that just means we're adding up the order of reaction with respect to each of our reactants. So it's gonna be one plus two, which is three. And finally, I'm writing out my differential rate law for this reaction. So my rate is gonna be K, which is a constant, multiplied by each of my reactants to the power of their order. So for R3Q, we had order one, so that's to the power of one, multiplied by XD, the concentration of XD, to the power of its order, which was two. So concentration of XD squared. And when we do to the power of one, that doesn't really mean anything. That's just the same as the thing itself. So I'm gonna get rid of the one there. So there's our differential rate law equation for this reaction. I'm gonna find that from my drop down box. It's R3Q times XD squared. So in this question, I've been given this information in the table and I'm using that to figure out when I doubled each component, what happened to the rate then I've used that to figure out my order for each one and therefore the rate law equation. We're gonna do one more question of this type. In this one, we're given the rate equation, the differential rate law, and we're using that to figure out what the results from each trial would be. So let's read our question. We've got a fictional reaction with substances Q and EL3. So we can see in our equation, we've got 2Q plus 2EL3. We're told the rate law is K multiplied by the concentration of Q to the power of three, multiplied by the concentration of EL3. So we can use that to figure out our order of reaction. So since Q, the concentration of Q is to the power of three in our rate equation, that means it has an order of three. So we can go ahead and fill that in here. EL3 doesn't have a power in our rate equation. That means it's to the power of one, which means it's first order. So that was our first step, which is simple, using our rate equation to find the order of the reaction with respect to each of our two reactants. The overall order of reaction, remember, is just adding up the order of each of our reactants. So it's gonna be three plus one, which is four. Awesome, so we've used our equation to figure out the order of reaction with respect to each component and overall. Lastly, we're gonna be actually figuring out what the initial rate of reaction would be based on each of these starting conditions. So, we're given information for trial one. So we're told when our concentration of Q is 0 0.7 molar and our concentration of EL3 is 5.6 molar, our initial rate of reaction is 0 0.4 molar per second. So let's look at between trial one and trial two. So 
Between trial one and trial two, the concentration of Q is constant, but the concentration of EL3 has changed. Let's figure out how much it's changed. So I'm going to do my final divided by my initial, so 2.8 divided by 5.6. That's going to get me half. So my concentration of EL3 has halved between trial one and trial two. So what's going to happen to my reaction rate? So the effect on our rate is going to be a half to the power of whatever our order is. And for EL3, the order of reaction is one. So the effect is going to be half to the power of one, which is just a half. So that means my initial rate of reaction, which was 0 0.400, is going to multiply a half, and I'm going to end up with 0 0.200 for my rate of reaction in trial two. Let's fill that in. Awesome. So between one and two, we knew the concentration of Q was constant. We knew that the concentration of EL3 halved. And so based on the fact that it's first order, we knew the initial rate of reaction would also halve. Okay, so we've done the first step. Now let's look at trial three. So in trial three, compared with trial one, we can see that our initial concentration of Q has changed, but our initial concentration of EL3 is equal. So let's go ahead and figure out how it's changed. So for the concentration of Q, it went from 0 0.7 to 1.4. So I'm gonna do the final concentration divided by the initial concentration. That's going to get me two. So my initial concentration of Q multiplied by two. So the question is, what's going to happen to our initial reaction rate? So if my concentration of Q changed by two, but the order of reaction with respect to Q is three, that means my effect on rate is going to be two to the power of my order, which is three. So my effect on rate is gonna be two times two times two, which is eight. So that means my rate is gonna multiply by eight. So 0 0.400 multiplied by eight gets us 3.2. So let's fill that in to see if we got that right. Awesome. So in trial three, compared with trial one, concentration of EL3 was constant concentration of Q doubled, and since our order of reaction with respect to Q is three, the effect was that the initial rate was multiplied by two cubed, which is where the eight comes from. So 0 0.4 times eight got us 3.2. Okay, awesome. Let's do one more. For trial four, I could choose to compare it to any of the previous trials. I'm gonna choose trial three. We can see that between trial three and four, our concentration of Q is the same, but our concentration of EL3 has changed. So let's figure out how much it's changed. We had 2.8 at the end. We started out with 5.6. So that means it changed by a half. So our concentration of EL3 multiplied by a half the question is what's gonna to happen to our initial reaction rate? Now, EL3, if we look over here, has an order of reaction of one. So that means the effect is gonna be half to the power of one, which is just a half. So my effect is also gonna be multiplying the rate by half. So my rate was 3.2 initially, I'm multiplying it by a half, that gets me a rate of 1.6. So let's fill that out to check that's correct. Awesome. So we've done all of our rows now. If you wanted to, say you were doing a test and you couldn't check whether the answers were correct, you could test it again by looking at any of these rows compared with each other. And we should be able to figure out our rate based on our order and our initial concentrations. So it doesn't matter which ones you choose each time, you're going to get the same answer if you do it correctly.